My own name is Maurice O'Connell. I am currently the chairperson of Abbeyfield, or should I say the current chairperson of Abbeyfield Community Council. Um, very proud to be involved with this group. Uh, we have almost 30 paid up members who themselves are all very actively involved in other community projects and other community groups. And I suppose Abbeyfield Community Council is a platform by which they all can share information and work on projects together and um, make it easier for them when it comes to drawdown funding or to get projects completed. Um, the area that we're in now is um, a reflective space in the town park which is known as Light on Stone. Um, some beautiful work here by stonemason Rory Dennison and I suppose it's a great place to being in the reflective space we can reflect on how Abbeyfield has come on with various projects over the last number of years and it is due to those almost 30 members of Abbeyfield Community Council working together that we have been successful. Well the Heritage Day, we've ran a Heritage Day events over the last number of years and luckily we've been successful with them. This year we're doing a series of reenactments, um, one of which is going to be based on the site where the old Abbey formerly stood in Abbey Field. It's where the town gets its name from. It's important to have days like this for the town because for a community understanding, for a community to understand its history is important. It brings about a sense of pride in place and a lot of the history to do with the Abbey in Abbey Field unfortunately has been forgotten but we are now rediscovering that and we want to share it with the local community and with visitors. The craft co-op was started by Mary and myself, Mary O'Connor, Wesley with Resources and I'm Mary Shanahan. So we got the bright idea in the earlier part of this year uh, to start a craft group. So we decided we'd apply for funding uh, which we got from Healthy Limerick, Healthy Ireland and um, we advertised and just to see if we could get craftspeople interested in getting together uh, and having kind of cafe style meetings as you can see uh, where we could practice our crafts compare notes have kind of creative sessions and have tea coffee and eats at the same time uh, it was very i suppose we were lucky to get the funding from healthy limerick, healthy limerick. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did four Ten sessions, Mary. Is that's it? right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the craft co-op is about social connectedness. That's what we got the funding under. And the social connectedness means connecting people of all different cultures and local people in the area to distribute their crafts, not to craft alone, but to come together as a group to craft. So it's open to everybody. Yes. Uh, we have some people from North Kerry and North Cork, as and well as, as West Limerick, as yeah. well as the Everfield area. And we have other craft groups that are actually in their own small little groups in their own area who have come here and they have displayed wonderful crafts that they're making at home. Yeah. Um, like the Athe group. Like the Athe group. group. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some individuals who are crafting at home and selling their crafts by themselves. Yeah. So um, it's great for them to come to our group and see the crafts of other people. And, uh, There's a whole range of crafts. Whole range there. of crafts. We've got sewing, knitting, knitting, arm sweaters, crochet, soap crochet, making, soap. felt making, uh, glass painting, wax pictures. Yeah. Uh, loads of needlework, loads of um, baby quilts, patchworks. I am. I am presenting to them to do um, a website that would present them to the international market on a retail scale, and then I will present at the international shows, the Celtic shows in America, to bring their items to the wholesale market as well. I, I'm a little biased because I come from the area, so I think we have a lot to offer that isn't being seen. Um, a lot of our people, even if they are doing it as a business, are only at the markets, and they haven't been able to get themselves out to the tourists or to the international markets. So that's why we're doing the online portion for those that only want to do retail. And then we'll do the shows for the people who want to go to a wholesale market. When it comes to our history, um, I suppose. Um, 
a lot of people uh, throughout Ireland who normally pass through Abbeyfield to get to the kingdom don't often realise how rich the heritage is in the area and um, if they stopped off in Abbeyfield um, and just spent five minutes they'd soon discover that we had um, dignitaries such as Daniel O'Connell who spent a lot of time in Abbeyfield. We have a lot of um, recorded history and letters from him and his family who are still here. Um, Abbeyfield is also noted for being the only place in Ireland that has surviving records for, uh, from the time that Princess Christina de Bellioso of Italy visited South West Ireland. Um, and those who may be familiar with her would realise that she went from being a princess to a revolutionary fighter and was very heavily involved in the um, freeing of Italy and giving it its own independence. What has me back here is uh, the family connection. I have three um, singles who never got married, never had children who live in the old cottage that we left. So I will get the cottage back. I'm the one, I'm the one in our side of the family that has no children, so I'll be the one coming home. I would feel it's unique because it has a lot to offer. However, the tourists don't know to stop, um, as well as locals. Everyone thinks it's just a place to go through to get to somewhere else. So, the, so my idea is to give them a reason to stop. I mean, feel is situated in the West Limerick Uplands and it's very unique historically and culturally. For example, in County Limerick, um, Irish was, it, it, it was spoken in up around this area a lot later than the wealthier areas down around the Golden Vale. Um, so it's, it's part of the slave local culture actually, which stretches down as far as other parts of Limerick. And, over towards uh, Castle Island and beyond. So it's got a very unique kind of cultural heritage of music and dance, mm -hmm. um, which is quite different from the rest of County Uh This is not the first time Mary O'Connor and I have gotten our heads together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so about three years ago, I guess. That's right, yeah. Um, a fun, at the same time, without realising it, but independently, Mary was applying for uh, commun Compassionate Communities money for the town park and I was applying for it for Glorick Community Theatre. We were going to do a number of kind of meditative and things like that. So we put our heads together mm -hmm. and uh, we made a joint application of funding and we got it. And one of the things that's left in the community, like we ran a number of different sessions like the we did, yeah. and meditation and so mm -hmm. on. And then there was a threefold, um, okay. three different parts in, in, in uh, how we spent the funding. One was the very kind of physical thing to have um, a space, um, a quiet space for people who are bereaved, our carers who are looking after people at home who are never recognised. So that they would have just a a little place where they could go and just think or meditate or just relax for a while and um, then we had classes on mindfulness uh, for people who carers as well mm -hmm. and um, drumming. we had a drumming workshop uh, this was community drumming yeah um, it, was it was very yeah. good yeah and actually the community drumming um, we're at the opening session of the light and stone the Light on Stone so, is in the town park where we had local crafters we again. We engaged and, a few crafters. Yeah. Um, one, did the, um, one did a, a stone um, sculpture. Of, it, it really is like a historical standing stone. I think you mm -hmm. kind of modelled it on that. And there's a, a sun emblem in the middle, sun, sun symbol, with a, an actual hole through the stone. Um, and that's the standing stone in the centre. And then around the perimeter, you have stones drawn from the old church, which was the famine church, but I believe earlier than that it was actually the old abbey, which was in the square for quite a number of years before the, the original church. So, um, and then footprints were cast, mm -hmm. uh, one of the artists cast footprints of people in the community who had been bereaved or, you know, or suffering grief. So, that's the space that was created then. It's kind of a creative artistic space, mm -hmm. I suppose, in the middle of nature, and very much to do with individual and meditation mm -hmm. and connecting. You know. and that, 
that funding was, was from Milford Hospice. Milford Hospice, yeah. at that point. Okay. We had a very good turnout for the opening of the Right Hand Stone, and we did a very big drumming occasion there, which could be heard all over the town, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> really, you know, it was wonderful. Mm-hmm. There was a big drumming circle kind of thing. Um, and I suppose, like, we've had the experience of developing that in the mm-hmm. community and leaving it there mm-hmm. for to live and to be there in the community. We would yes. hope this might be something the same, you know, uh, starting up this group, that we would hope to develop it and that it would become something mm-hmm. durable and something that would sustain uh, and maybe now even more so it has the opportunity.